From Hollywood, California, the Lux Radio Theater presents Edward Arnold and Anne Shirley in Come and Get It with Walter Brennan, Lou Ayers, Mary Nash, and Mady Christians. Lux presents Hollywood. If you enjoy these programs, ladies and gentlemen, remember that they are made possible through your purchases of our products and come to you with the sincere appreciation of our sponsors. Our play tonight, adapted from Edna Ferber's great novel, stars Edward Arnold, Anne Shirley, Walter Brennan, Lou Ayers, Mary Nash, Mady Christians, and Marion Burns. As a special guest, we present Miss Helen Rowland, author and columnist, writer of The Merry-Go-Round, the famous and nationally known column on love and marriage. Lois Silvers conducts our orchestra. And now, here's our producer. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Many young men sincerely believe that they cannot succeed without a lucky break. And perhaps they're right. But I should like to point out to them the case of Edward Arnold. His break was usually a heartbreak. Arnold was born deep in the New York slums. When he was eight, his father went blind. And his mother died when he was ten. His was the great good fortune to climb out of bed at daybreak to deliver papers and to work for a butcher who paid his weekly salary, not in cash, but in scraps of meat. At the age of 12, he worked 18 hours a day for $14 a week, until the bones of his feet gave way, and he had to spend 21 weeks in plaster casts. He went to Columbia University, not to attend classes, but to work in the boiler room of of the powerhouse. A welfare organization called the East Side Settlement House started him as an actor. Once in a while... The settlement house made brave attempts to stage Shakespeare. On those occasions, young Mr. Arnold walked off with the honors. He later acted with Robert Mantell, became stage manager for Ethel Barrymore, and played in films made by the old Esne Company. When he returned to the theater, he was so good as a cowboy that no one would cast him as anything else. So he virtually starved, till the New York Theater Guild took him up. He came to Hollywood in a road company, and, as is so often the case, was persuaded to remain. One of our greatest character actors, he hasn't forgotten his lean days. And today is one of our finest citizens. It's a privilege to present him as Barney Glasgow in Come and Get It, the same role he played in Samuel Goldwyn's screen production. Our stage tonight is aglow with stars. As Lotta, there's Anne Shirley, who delivered such a splendid performance for us recently in Stella Dallas. From the original cast are Walter Brennan, Mary Nash, and Mady Christians. Mr. Brennan, who has just completed a role for me in The Buccaneer, is heard as Swan. Miss Nash is Emmy, Miss Christian's Carrie, and Lou Ayers, one of the favorite young men of filmdom, plays Bernie. And now the Lux Radio Theater presents Edward Arnold in Come and Get It, with Anne Shirley, Walter Brennan, Lou Ayers, Mady Christians, and Mary Nash. The year is 1880, and our scene is a lumber camp in the hills of Wisconsin. Near the cookhouse, a small boy beats lustily on an iron triangle, calling the lumberjacks to their five o'clock breakfast. Come and get it! Come and get it! Set up and we'll fall out! From the road comes Barney Glasgow. He's dressed in city clothes, but his walk is that of a woodsman. He mounts the cookhouse steps and stands beside the chore boy, gazing at him with frank amusement. Come and get it! Give me that rod and let me show you how to do that. Huh? Uh, you got to put some zing into your mitt. Now watch this. Come and get it! Come and get it! How's that? Gee, mister, you sure can make that old thing talk. Hey, out there! Hello, Pete! Barney Glasgow! Was that you making all that record? <laughs> Who did sound like? Up to your old tricks. Huh? Once a chore boy, always a chore boy. <laughs> Gee, mister, you was never a chore boy, was you? Well, it's nothing to be ashamed of, son. As long as you keep your cookhouse nice and neat, you don't have to call me mister. Well, there's the boys already. <laughs> you sure pulled them out with that racket, buddy. <laughs> hey, who's that clothes horse up there? It's Barney Glasgow. Hi, boy! Hi, Barney. Hi, Jake. Hi, Pete. Hi, Barney. Hey, wait a minute. Take it easy. Take it easy. <laughs> 
<laughs> Where's Swan? Is it Swan around? He'll be right up. I want to see that, Swede. What are you doing up this way, Barney? Thought you were an office man now. Oh, just looking around? What's the matter? Ain't we cutting enough timber to suit the old man? As it happens, no. Not half enough. That's too bad, ain't Who, it? Who's talking, mister? You or your hangover? What's that? I don't know who you are around here, but I'm Barney Glasgow. And I don't like men drinking on my job. Say, listen, if you think... Get I... inside, I'll talk to you later. Coming in with the water. Watch your feet. Hey, what the... Oh, gee, mister, I'm sorry. Hey, you I clumsy didn't... little rat, I'll teach you to splash water on me. Oh, oh, hey. Wait a minute, oh. wait a minute. The kid couldn't help it. Now, take your hands off. Yeah? Take your hands off or I'll give you a dose of it yourself. When are you starting, mister? Right now, you dirty... Oh! oh. oh. Maybe, maybe that'll cool him off a little. Huh? Nice job, Barney. He's been itching for that for a month. Hey, hey, what's the matter here? Break it up. Who's running this camp anyway? It's me or you? I am. Hello, Swan. Oh, Barney, yump and yiminy. Why ain't you telling me you was coming? Swan. Thank you, George, I get to see you. Swan, you old polka. How have you been? Oh, you're spine as frogs, hey, you big dude, you. What happened here? Oh, I just had to put one of your tough boys to sleep for a minute, that's yeah. all. Hey. Get up, you. Hey, uh, Yemeni, next time you know better than start monkey business at Barney Glasgow. Uh, hey, Barney, what do you mean you run in this camp? That's right. You would just made me the boss of the line. Hey, Yemeni! <laughs> Big boss of the whole line. Hey, yours we going to celebrate, hey, Barney? <laughs> you bet we will. I'm going to take every man in the camp to town. <laughs> <laughs> we sure will. As soon as we get this timber down to the mill. Oh. Yeah, oh. <laughs> she torn, Barney. To Mama, does she go up three points since noon? Yeah, that's the south wind. Looks like the spring breakup, all right. If these figures of mine are right, we've made a record cut, Swan. Now, we won't leave 10 cents worth of timber behind us when we move out. Hmm, by golly, Spani, you sure get them to be slave drivers. Ah, uh, you gotta be if you're gonna get any place. Yeah, you get some place, too. Big boss, a whole line now, huh? <laughs> That's only the beginning, Swan. <laughs> Maybe you even going to marry old man's daughter? What'd you say? What'd you hear about me and Emmy Louise? Oh, I used to hear one of the timekeepers spout, and I guess maybe there's nothing to it. <laughs> well, there's no maybe about it. Huh? It's a fact, yeah. We're going to get hitched. Barney! Why ain't you tell me, by Yemeni, why I always have to squeeze it out of you like you was a flaw? <laughs> she pretty? Well, she's got a good head on her. I'll say that for her. When you get unmarried, Barney. Oh, as soon as I get back, maybe. Only before I go, I got to see that the boys get that little jamboree, I promise you. Yeah, we take care of that, all right. <laughs> Welcome to Iron Ridge, gentlemen. Glad to see you back. Hello, Barney. Hello, Sid. How are you doing? Hey, you in the old city cell. Gentlemen, the first one is on the house. And all the rest are on me. Now go to it, boys. <laughs> One of the greatest problems of the scientific world is the hand quicker than the eye, or vice versa, is the eye quicker than the hand? Hello, Max. Well, well, hello, Barney. Feeling lucky this trip? Sure. Five dollars says the ball is under that shell. Uh, Right you are. (laughs) Uh, Step right up, ladies and gentlemen. Now, there are three shells and the little round ball. Pick the shell that covers the ball, and you win your bet. Try it again, Barney? Well, why not? Can I bet anything you like? Anything you like. Fine. I bet one, two, three, four, five hundred dollars. Hey, wait a minute. You can't do that. Oh, sure I can. No, 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 well, can you cover it? Well, I'll, uh, I'll have to ask the boys. Barney, five hundred dollars. What if you lose? Oh, let me alone. I know what I'm doing. Now, come on, boys. Give me a little elbow room oh, around here. Would you move over there, just? Oh, excuse me. Oh, that's all right. I didn't see you standing there. You going to bring me luck? If I do, it'll be the first time. Oh, so you're not lucky, huh? You think I'd be here if I was? Sid says it's okay, Barney. Sure, it's okay. Go ahead. Fine. Are you ready, Barney? Let her roll. Barney, you're crazy. Uh, Now, watch me closely, gentlemen. Finally observe that I wear no mustache to deceive you. (laughs) Uh, There you are. Now, which shell is it under? Well, uh, she's under this one. Oh, is she? Well, pick up the shell and let's see. (laughs) And not on your life, mister. You pick up the other two shells. Okay, Barney. That ain't no way to play this game, and you know it. Well, it's the way I'm going to play it. 
You pick up those other two shells, girlie, and let's see if the ball is under them. Sure. Nothing under here. Looks like you win, Mr. <laughs> Yeah, well, thanks, Sid, and thank you, girlie. Come on over and sit down. Thanks. Are you always so lucky? Not in a long time. Nothing so good looking. I wasn't thinking of myself. I was. Come on over. I'll be there in a minute. I gotta sing another number yet. All right, but don't keep us waiting. Come on, boys. The rest of the night is on. Bear with you, buddy. Sid, Sid. What you want? Want me to get your money back, Sid? I'll give you a hundred bucks if you do. All right, give me something to knock him out with. Sure, here. There's a powder on this cigarette. Wait a little while, then slip it in your drink and switch glasses on him. Okay, and I'll see you later for that hundred bucks. Yeah, wait. Wait, uh, wait till this crowd leaves before you slip it to him. I, I don't want no trouble. I got it. The yellow would be allowed to go ahead. Kid, Swan. It's a nice kid. Yeah. And that nice song, Ori Lee. That nice, too, huh? Yeah. No, she's beautiful. I wonder what she's doing in a place like this. Cut it out. What's the matter? It's getting late. Sid'll be ready to close up soon. Yeah. Uh, Lotta, how long have you been here? Well, two, three weeks. Why? Oh, I just wondered. Where did you come from? Back east. Why? How long since you left home? See, you fellas are all alike, aren't you? You entertain a girl for a couple of hours, you want to know the history of her whole life. What's it to you anyway? Oh, wait a minute. I didn't mean anything. Sit down. Want a cigarette? No, I've, I've got my own. Light? Oh, uh, oh, gee, I, I knocked over your glass. Well, there's more where that came from. Here, take mine. Now, go on. No, no, I don't want mine honest. Please take it. Oh, all right. Uh, look, Lana, uh, don't get sore. But is there any good reason why you can't pull out of here and go back to your folks? If you must know, there's plenty of reasons. A hundred and sixty-five reasons. Just railroad fare, huh? Ain't that enough? You think that kind of money grows on trees? <laughs> Sometimes. Here, here's enough for railroad fare, a couple of new dresses, and a little something extra to buy a present for the old folks. Huh? Bonnie, are you crazy in the head? Hey, mister, you ain't trying to make a fool out of me, are you? No. I just think you're too fine a girl for a place like this, that's all. It's all velvet. Go on and take it. No. Go on. No, I tell you. What do you think I am? Oh, Swan, you better get this fool out of here. Too proud to take it, huh? Get out of here, I tell you. I ain't fooling. Your crowd's gone if you think Sid's gonna let you pack off that bankroll. You've got another thing coming. That's all I gotta say. Oh, go on, Barney. Please, please do what I tell you. All right, but you're coming with us. No. No, I'm not. I'm staying right here where I belong. Yeah? Well, then I'm going to stay with you. He's looking at you, Lotto. Don't drink that. Why? Put that glass down. Why? Put it down! Lotto! Why you do that? Why you knock glass down, huh? Because she's just the kind of a girl I thought she was. We're getting out of here now, the three of us. Come on. Hey, boy. Hey, can you turn the steam down a little? You want to boil us? Excuse me. Fix it now. <laughs> Finish steam bot. Bay Yemeni ain't nothing like finished steam bot, Barney. Lotta ain't nourished tonight. Uh, that's what I'm afraid of. Say, isn't she grand? Did you ever see anybody like her, Swan? By George, it's funny thing, Banny. I never see you get so crazy about girl before. Mm. All in one week, too. <laughs> when did I ever meet a girl like her before? You like her, huh? Like her? It's more than that, Swan. It's a lot more. You know, she's everything I've always looked for in a woman. I never found. She's every woman I've ever met. All in one. <laughs> You got to be nice to her, Sonny. She's crazy about you, too. Nice to her? Say, haven't I treated her like she was my own sister? I... Uh, Mr. Glasgow. Yeah, what? Uh, man here to see you. Say his name is uh, Hewitt. The old man. Get me out of here, quick. Uh, tell him to meet us in the dressing room. Yeah. yeah. Sit down, Mr. Hewitt. Uh, we'll be with you in a minute. I'll speak to you now. I got to get right back to Chicago. Oh, yeah? Barney, who's that woman you've been running around with up here? <laughs> 
<laughs> now, you didn't come all the way up here to ask me that, did Never you? Never mind about that. I heard all about your goings-on, and I'm surprised at you, Barney. I really am. Well, I don't blame you. I'm a little surprised at myself. Well, as long as you realize it yourself, I won't say any more. I've got some good news for you, Barney. Congress has passed that bill. They're giving railroads every other section of land along any new right-of-way. They are, eh? Yes, and if we work fast, we can put your scheme into operation. What scheme? We're going to build a railroad, Swan. A hundred miles of useless tracks right through the Pine Belt. The government will sell us the best pine territory in the state for $1,000 a mile. But that ain't honest. Come on, Barney, get into your clothes. We've got to travel. Yeah, that's right, but there's someone I've got to look after first. Now, look here, Barney. I thought you were going to be sensible about this woman. But if you're not, that's all I want to know. Now, wait a minute, Mr. York. That's no way to talk. Oh, I'm not going to put any pressure on you, Barney. But if you don't drop this whole sickening affair right here and now and come along with me, you're not going to be any son-in-law of mine, much less a partner. Partner? You heard me, I believe. I said partner. Now, listen, Barney, you... You keep out of this, Swan. How soon does that train leave? Twenty minutes. I'll meet you at the station. Good. I'll be waiting. Well, go ahead. Why don't you say something? You tell me not to. You think I'm going to throw away a partnership in a thing like this? It's stealing, Barney. You ask anybody. I bet your pa would say same thing. I bet he'd say, Barney, you stay in woods with Swan. You'd be better off. You can't do nothing with money, only spend it. Yeah, sure. And where did it get him? A camp foreman all his life. Dodging the big trunks as they came down until one day he slipped. It's a nice finish, isn't it? Yeah. <sighs> We all take chances, Barney. That's our life. And what about Lada? You should think about her, too. She going to... She going to feel pretty bad. Oh, she'll be all right. She'll get over it. Ain't no. Women is funny sometimes. Well, tell her if she ever needs anything, I'll... Uh, tell her just to let me know. Me tell her? You mean you're not going to see her before you go? I, I haven't got time, Swan. Well, so long. I'll see you next summer. But, Barney, uh, what I tell her? Uh, tell her the truth. I can't do that. I can't. You want me to kill her? Barney! Barney. Barney, is that you, darling? It's me, Lotta. Oh, Swan, come in. Where's Barney? He said he'd be ready early tonight. Yeah, Lotta, he... He said if we could polish off this town tonight, we might go up tomorrow and wait to take a whack at La Croix. Oh, crazy, Barney. Listen, Lotta... I got to tell you something about Barney you ain't know. Sure, I know. He's just on a big spree, and I better not take him too seriously. Mm-hmm. Is that what they're trying to tell you? Oh, Swan, I know women have spoiled Barney, but, oh, this ain't anything like that. I knew it the minute I seen him. It was like getting a bang on the nose. For a while, I didn't know what was the matter with me. <laughs> oh, he ain't said anything, Swan. He's not the kind. And so far, he's treated me like I was his own sister. But if he don't feel the same way I do... Lotta, who ain't... Please. What's the matter? Barney. He ain't coming back. What? He gone. He already leave on noon train. You... You're fooling, ain't you, Swan? No, I ain't fool. He gone, Lotta. What for? What did I do? You ain't do nothing. But that's the way Barney is. He always been like that. Work, work all the time. Last year, he's scaling timber for me. Next time I see him, he's my boss. Now he's sure it's partner. Going up north to steal a hundred million dollars and marry boss's daughter. I ain't no. The boss's daughter. I guess I wasn't good enough for him. Barney going to be a big man someday. That's all he think about. I would have helped him. I would have worked with him. I'd have done anything. Oh, I don't believe it. He couldn't do it. He couldn't. He couldn't. You mustn't blame Barney, Lotta. It ain't his fault. He just liked that, that all. And... I know I ain't much, but I'm here, Lotta, and maybe I could make you happy if you let me try. Oh, Swan. Oh, Swan. Lotta. You ready, Lotta? Yes. They waiting for us. I know, Swan. You're a fool to marry me. No, Lotta. I don't love you. Yeah, I know. You love Barney. But you like me a little bit. You're... You're willing to marry me after I tell you a thing like that? Yeah, sure. 
I love you, Lotta. I got to look after you. And now maybe you give me a little kiss, yours for luck. A man as good as you are will always have luck, Swan. And if you want me as bad as that. They're waiting for us, Lotta. All right. I'm ready. Continue Come and Get It Presently, starring Edward Arnold and Anne Shirley. While we are waiting for Act Two, we want you to go with us to a party. Let's join Dorothy M., a fashion reporter, who is taking in this party with an out-of-town friend. Wait till the folks back home hear about this. I never saw so many famous people in my life. Oh, Dot, Dot, look over there. Who's that? Oh, I've been looking for her. This year's best-dressed New Yorker. Some hat. Oh, Dot, it must be at least a foot high. Well, that's very smart this year. See, she's wearing a lame suit to match the hat. And the skirt is much shorter. Hmm, there's a new fashion note. What? A run in the left stocking. Oh, she must be dying. That's happened to me, and at the worst moment... You'll have to learn my rule for cutting down stocking runs. Use Lux Flakes. Why Lux Flakes? <laughs> Why, indeed. Well, for one thing, because it has no harmful alkali. And, of course, with Lux Flakes, there's no rubbing. You know, rubbing stockings with cake soap weakens the threads. I hadn't thought of that, but I suppose it does. But just sousing them up and down in Lux Suds saves the elasticity of the thread. And then they stretch without snapping so often. Oh, I've saved an awful lot on stockings by luxing them. You better tell the best-dressed lady about luck. <laughs> She'd probably be grateful. I might put it in the column tomorrow. Note to a dubiously well-dressed woman. Get a large package of Lux Flakes and start luxing your stockings. It helps cut that down those embarrassing runs, which can ruin even the best-dressed woman's appearance. Our producer, Mr. DeMille. We continue with Come and Get It, starring Edward Arnold and Anne Shirley, with Walter Brennan, Lou Ayers, Mary Nash, and Mady Christians. Twenty-five years have passed. Married to old Hewitt's daughter, Barney Glasgow's success was certain. His advancement rapid. He's at the head of the firm now, the perfect type of middle-aged business executive, quick in his decisions and sure of his judgment. In the bedroom of his handsomely furnished townhouse, he stands before the mirror, carefully adjusting his tie. Evie, his daughter, enters with a letter in her hand. Morning, Dad. Well, the Gibson girl. Aren't you getting old enough to have your breakfast in bed? None of your gust, please. I like my breakfast hot and plenty of it, just like you do. Oh, here's a letter from Swan. Oh, yeah? Well, open it up and read it. I did already. He says, Dear Barney, maybe it's better so I go back to work next month if that's all right with you. Maybe you think I'm too old, but I ain't. You come up here, I show you. Make you look sick cutting tree down. Used like I always did, they, you me. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> well, I never liked to hurt his feelings. <laughs> go on. Anyway, there's a lot of deer and quail, and I saw some new bear tracks yesterday by the creek, but don't come up on my account. Thanks for nice stone you send for Lotta's grave. Must cost you lots of money. My sister Carrie and young Lotta send their love. Lotta, she's a big girl now. You wouldn't know her. Say hello to your wife and the young ones. They must be getting pretty big now, too. Your friend, Swan Bostrom. Good old Swan. Dad, why don't you take a run up there? Oh, gosh, I'd like to, you know. I haven't seen Swan for three or four years, the old polecat. <laughs> What's that he said about a stone for Lotta's grave? Well, I sent it up when you went back east for the convention that time. Oh, you did? What for? Well, seeing that you've always let me read Swan's letters to you, it wasn't hard to put two and two together. Especially after the look on your face when you got word that... Lotta was dead. Now, well, that was very nice of you, but it's none of your business or anybody else's. Look, Dad, why don't you go up in the woods and kill a couple of grizzly bears instead of going around here acting like one? What? Honest, you've gotten awful prissy lately. You could leave today. Do you good. Well, 
Well, sir, aren't you having a party tonight? You know I am. And the very thought of it makes you want to cuss. Well, how did you know? Oh, because it makes me feel a little that way, too. Dad, take me with you when you go up to the ridge sometime, will you? Sure I will. We'll take a trip all by ourselves. Oh, huh? that'll be wonderful. Let's do it before I'm married. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, look here, Evie. Are you sure you want to marry Orville Bremer? Shut up. Do you think I'd do it if I didn't want to? Well, it has been done. But not you, my dear. Come on. Mother will say our breakfast is ruined. All right, I'll be down right away. More coffee, Bernie? Hmm? Oh, well, thanks, Mother. Morning, Mother. Morning, Benny. Mm. Bernie, you better be careful how you muss up that paper. You know how upset your father gets when it's not fresh. I've told you a dozen times you might just as well use his toothbrush. Well, frankly, I don't see the slightest connection. It doesn't seem to occur to the richest man in Wisconsin that we might have two morning papers. Well, that would be silly extravagance. And the reason Mr. Glasgow is the richest man in Wisconsin is because he and my father before him knew how to take care of their money. <laughs> Mother, uh, don't you think your habit of calling father Mr. Glasgow is uh, just a little old-fashioned? Perhaps it is, Bernie. But my mother never called my father anything but Mr. Hewitt to his dying day. Never? Never. Good morning. Hello, Dad. Hello. Good morning, dear. Why are you so late? Your breakfast is just... Just ruined, I know. Uh, so is the newspaper. Bernie, I've told What's you a thousand times... What's the matter? Times... I didn't... Have some coffee, dear? Yes, thanks. Here. I see Chapman's are having a sale on down comforters. I have a good notion to run down to Milwaukee with Evie. If it weren't for all the parties. Oh, uh, Emmy, um, uh, you and Evie will have to uh, count me out for the rest of the week. Uh, I've got to go up to Iron Ridge. Iron Ridge? What for? On no, business. But, Mr. Glasgow, you can't. Tonight, Evie's dinner party for Orville and his family. The first one since they've been engaged. I never heard of such a thing. What will Orville's folks think? Well, frankly, I don't give a hoot what they think. Evie, did you hear what he said? He says he's going up to Iron Ridge. I heard it. I wish I could go with him. A nice way for a girl to talk who's going to be married in two months. If I felt that way, I wouldn't get engaged in the first place, much less married. You know, that's an idea. What? Now look here, Evie. You, you don't have to marry that fat can of lard or anybody else if you don't want to. Oh, Orvie's all right. He's a good kid. A good kid? Well, I never... Well, I've got to be off. Got a lot to do before train time. How long will you be gone, Dad? Back in a week, sure. Well, goodbye, Evie. Goodbye. Goodbye, Evie. So long, Dad. Bring me back a bear. What? Uh, I mean, come back quick. Did you say bear? <laughs> Goodbye, Emmy. <laughs> Bye-bye, Evie. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, you're looking fine, Swan. How's the old back holding up? Pretty good? Yeah, pretty good. Hurt Nate sometimes. We get an old, maybe, huh? Old? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Say, I'm hungry. Where are we going to eat? Out at the camp? Well, uh, no. I got bad news, Barney. The camp she burned down in the middle of night. What? Oh, that big fool cookie I sent over, he start fire, then... You mean to say I can't stay at the camp? Why, doggone it, I only came up here to shoot. Well, I'll go back on number 11 tonight. Ah, oh, Barney, we ain't need no camp. We get this anyways. You stay at my house. No, no, I'm going back on number 11. Ah, oh, Barney, you ain't want to do that. This first time I see you for years. You got to see my sister Carrie and young Lotta. You ain't see young Lotta since her mother died. Well, that's right. Well, where is she? Up at hotel. Hey, tell my sister Carrie she got to have bang up breakfast to you. Carrie? Oh, that's so. Carrie's working at the Ridge House. She are sure she had waitress. And my young Lotta, she waitress there too. She is? But she's only a kid. She can't be old enough to wait on a table already. No. <laughs> wait till you see young Lotta, Bay Yemeni. You soon find out how old you are. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Glasgow. Oh, how long? I guess you don't remember me. I'm Carrie, Swan's sister. Why, Carrie, hello, hello. Swan said you'd be here and I'm getting a nice breakfast all ready for you. Oh, that's fine. Have you got any good Swedish food, Carrie? No, not here. But how'd you like to come to Swan's tonight and I'll get you a good supper? All sweet cooking. No, no, I can't. I'm taking number 11 back tonight. The customer over there wants to see you, Aunt Carrie. Oh, Lotta, come here. Lotta? Is that... 
Is that lava? You want me, Aunt Carrie? Yes. This is Mr. Glasgow. Pleased to make your acquaintance, Mr. Glasgow. Lava. <laughs> kind of favors her mother, doesn't she? Well, she's... She's the image of her. Everybody says that who used to know Mother. You knew her, didn't you? Yes, yes. Uh, I I knew her. Well, I... I gotta get busy. See you later, Mr. Glasgow. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, sit down, Lala. Oh, I can't now. Oh, go ahead, sit down. It's all right. <laughs> well... Uh, how long have you been working here, Lala? Just a couple of months. Of course, I helped Aunt Carrie off and on ever since I came out of high school in Ashland. I graduated there. Well, well, <laughs> that's fine, isn't it? Do you like it here? Oh, they pay pretty good, but I don't like waiting on table much. Oh, the fellas get too fresh, do they? Not with me, they don't. Oh, still and all, I'd like to go to Milwaukee or somewhere and, and learn something. Not be stuck in some jumping-off place like Pa and Aunt Carrie have been stuck all their life. Well, you won't be. <laughs> no, I wish I were sure of that. Do that again. <laughs> what? Laugh like that again. <laughs> Why? You know, you... <laughs> uh, you want to get your teeth fixed. That one on the side is a little crooked. Uh, oh, yes, I ought to. They're all even except that one. Well, I'd better get your breakfast. Pa said you're going back on number 11. Who, me? Oh, no, I'm not in such a hurry. <laughs> I can get it tomorrow or maybe the day after. You're going to stay. Oh, Pa will be so glad. We'll see you then, won't we? Oh, sure. Sure, you'll see me. Well, what's got into you? Ironing this time of day. I've got to have a clean dress for Mr. Glasgow's supper tonight. You put that one on this morning. Two clean dresses a day? Well, why not? Look, Lada, soon as dinner is over this noon, I'm going to beat it right home and get things going. You get off and be up there. Time Mr. Glasgow and your pa get there. No, I'll come later. Well, why, for Pete's sake? Your pa like it you there, and Mr. Glasgow, too. Mr. Glasgow would like it better if I'm not there when he comes. And then he waits a while and thinks maybe I'm not coming, and then I come. What are you driving at anyway? He likes me. What are you up to, young lady? Nothing, Aunt Carrie. Only if I have to work hard and can't get anywhere until late, Mr. Glasgow would feel sorry for a person, wouldn't he? What are we, dummy? What if he is? You and Pa have been dumb all your whole lives. Well, thank you, Miss Marty. And where does Mr. Glasgow come in? Well, he's rich and can do a lot for me if I can just make him think I'm worth helping. You know, he don't think of me just like anyone. I'm Swan Bostrom's girl, and I got looks. I can amount to something, and he'll help me. You just wait and see. Oh, no, I won't. You're not going to begin any of your shenanigans on Mr. Glasgow. He's only being nice to us on account of Swan, and you know it. I know lots of things, Aunt Carrie. You know how Ma kept after me, always saying she didn't want me to be like other girls. Well, I'm just beginning to see what she meant. <laughs> That was nice, Lada. Hey, Yemeni, she sing that good, huh, Bernie? Just like a ma. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Thanks. By George, sometimes I think when I look at a singer like that, I think... Bernie, what the matter? What you looking at? Huh? Oh, oh nothing, nothing. I, I was just thinking. Um, here, let me fill your glass, Lada. Thank you. Well, for Pete's sake, Lada. Give me those glasses, Mr. Glasgow. She ought to be waiting on you. <laughs> and she isn't going to wait on anybody anymore if I can help it. Huh? Well, what do you mean? Well, girls like uh, her have got no business in a hotel dining room. It's a crime, the way those men looked at her this morning. You don't realize it, Swan. She's, she's got to have the right start, and I'm going to help her. Me? Oh, Mr. Glasgow. Well, why not? It's the least I could do. For old times' sake. Telegram, Mother. From Father, I guess. What does it say? Here, give it to me. Dear Emmy, Swan's back much worse. I'm bringing him down for treatment. Tell Bernie to look for house. Carrie and young Lotta are with us. Love. Love. 
what level? A lot of you, what's the matter? Didn't you enjoy your dinner? It's the last meat I'll eat in that dining car. Why didn't you tell us we looked like rubes? Well, what are you talking about? You looked all right. Don't lie to me. You were ashamed of us. I could see it and I could feel it. With all those women goggling and grinning at our clothes. Listen, mother. You don't need to worry about what other women think. Because you'll always be the most beautiful woman in the room. No matter where you are. And they'll all be wishing you they were like you. Now, remember that. <laughs> Just look at it. It's the most beautiful house I've ever seen. It's heaven, that's what it is. It's almost too good for us. I don't know... Oh, Aunt Carrie, I didn't know anybody could be so happy. Was there ever such a man as Mr. Glasgow? All he's doing for us, for Pa. Yeah? He's sending me down into town again tomorrow. Wants me to pick out whatever I want. What do you mean? Clothes, silly. Well, you've got enough now, Lover. Not to suit him, I haven't. He wants me to be as well-dressed as anybody in this town. Better even... And I will. You can bet on that. Lotta, wait. You mustn't do this. Why not? Because you mustn't. There's more to this man than just doing things for Pa. He's known Pa for years. He never did anything for him before. How is it all going to end, Lotta? How do I know? Lotta, you... Mr. Glasgow is a married man. More than twice your age. What if he is? Nobody in the world has ever been so good to me as he has. Why, all I have to do is think of what he took us all out of... And I'm not going to give it up for you or anyone else. I don't care how it ends. Do you understand that? I don't care. We pause for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. We'll continue in a moment with Act Three of the Lux Radio Theater presentation, Come and Get It. As you listened, you heard with recurring persistence the call of a woman to a man, when after 25 years, the image of that woman, recreated in her daughter, rolls back the years. Our guest in the Lux Radio Theater this evening is known throughout the country as a philosophical thinker on such matters. Her name is Helen Rowland. Her column, The Merry-Go-Round, has for the past eight years been distributed by King Features Syndicate, appearing in nearly a hundred newspapers throughout the United States. She speaks to you now from New York City, Miss Helen Rowland. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. You're very gracious. You know, at heart, I'm really an incurable romanticist. Believe it or not, my theory is that real love comes only once in a lifetime. All your other little loves are just false alarms. Life, after all, is like a poem. The most important thing about it is not that it should be long, but that it should be beautiful and interesting. And that's what love makes it. I don't believe that a man's heart or a woman's either should curl up like a cat and go fast asleep after 40. There's no reason why you should not have love, companionship, and romance as long as you live. But seek it with somebody of your own generation. Someone who speaks your own language and sings your own songs and doesn't expect you to dance the Big Apple when you're only gated to a waltz. You know, the real problem nowadays is not how to get a husband, but how to hold on to him after you've got him. To find your mate, that is luck. To know him when you find him, that's inspiration. To win him when you know him, that is art. To hold him when you've won him, that is a life work. I've just been asked if I believe that it's the hand that rocks the cradle which rules the world. Well, that may be true, but it's the hand that keeps itself soft and white and kissable that gets the man. That's one reason why we women owe a vote of thanks to such a marvelous product as Lux. For the loveliest white hands sometimes have to get down to such things as dishwashing. And Lux Flakes keeps your hands soft and smooth and make dishwashing almost like a beauty treatment. You know, it's far easier to keep a dozen men guessing than to keep one man after he's stopped guessing. And a man always stops guessing about you when you've ceased to be a parlor ornament and have become a kitchen utensil. But all your life long, you can have love and romance 
It may come in the springtime of life, all fresh and glowing and tender, or it may come in life's Indian summer. But if it's the real thing, it never dies, because love is not a fleeting infatuation. It is understanding, flavored with sentiment, tenderness, colored with romance, comradeship, sprinkled with stardust, and that combination is immortal. From Hollywood, we send our thanks, Miss Rowland, and return now to Edward Arnold and Anne Shirley in Come and Get It with Walter Brennan, Lou Ayers, Mary Nash, and Mady Christians. As the days pass, Barney devotes more and more time to Lotta, seeing in her the reincarnation of the girl he loved long ago. Carrie's fears take firmer root, and finally, in desperation, she goes to Swan and tells him of her suspicions. We've got to go back to Iron Ridge. This is no place for us. Why, Carrie? I'm Why? scared, Swan. Scared for Lada. All these things Mr. Glasgow's been doing for us, it isn't for us. Ah. It's all for her. But I tell you, he's in love with her. He is, Swan. You make big mistake, Carrie. Barney not in love with Lada. He's still in love with her ma, at all. But he doesn't know that. And she likes him. Oh, Anything might happen. Uh, no, no, Carrie. I won't hear such talk. You ain't no Barney Glasgow. He's my friend. Just a minute. Oh, hello. Uh, how do you do? Are you, uh, Lotta Bostrom? Yes. I'm Bernie Glasgow. Yes, I know. I hope you'll excuse my looks. I'm just making some taffy. Won't you come in? No, thanks. Is your father home? Why, no, he isn't. He's gone for a walk with Aunt Carrie. Then I'll tell you what I came to say. The Glasgow family won't stand for you or any other yellow-haired vampire making a fool out of my father. What? I don't pretend to know how far things have gone, but I stand ready to pay you any reasonable sum to leave town. I'm assuming, of course, that it's money you want. Why, you, you, I'll kill you. Now, now just a minute. I'll kill you, I'll kill you if you don't take that back. Are you crazy? Stop it. Let go of me, you big brute, you... Oh... Oh. What's the matter? It's burning. It's burning. What? My taffy, and it's all your fault. Oh, but look, I, I didn't mean to. Don't speak to me now. Just look at that taffy. Just look at it. I'm sorry. Here, let me help you. Let it alone. Don't you touch oh, it. But I... Don't, don't touch it, I said. You and your big talk coming in here and telling me oh, that... Oh, wait, please. I, you mustn't get so excited. I can see I've misjudged you, and, and I'm sorry. Really, I am. All right. Never mind that now. If you want to show me really how sorry you are, you can help me clean up this mess. in the flower, then the taffy won't stick to them. Oh, I get the idea. Go on, Mr. Glasgow. What were you saying about paper? Oh, yes. Well, the art of paper making was first used by the Chinese, the ancient Chinese. To them is generally conceded the discovery of the art of paper making of the sort familiar to us from uh, fibrous matter reduced to pulp. Really? I never knew that. Oh, yes. And there's a Chinese saying, time and patience will change the mulberry leaf into satin. Oh, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Most beautiful thing I ever saw. Huh? I mean, heard. Go on. Tell me some more about paper. You you talk so beautifully. I never knew history was so interesting, Mr. Glasgow. Yeah, never seemed so darned interesting before. And uh, please don't call me mister. Well, you keep calling me Miss Bostrom. All right. Is that a sign you've forgiven me? No, I'll never do that. Uh, I'm an awful ass, but... But honest, I, I thought you were... Uh, a vampire? Yeah. I, I didn't realize you were so young and, and kind of innocent and sweet. You'd forgive me if you knew how sorry I am. I... I forgive you, Bernie. You do? Thanks. Lotta. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds funny. You there holding carpet walking up and down like that. Well, where is she? She ought to be home from business school now. I wanted to speak to her about something. Oh. I think maybe it was me you come to see. Well, it's all of you. But I, I like folks to be in once in a while. This isn't the first time either. Funny, I ain't understand you sometime. You act like you're... <laughs> well, there she is. Who's that with her? <laughs> no, stop. Oh, come on. Bernie. 
Oh, oh, hello, Dad. Hello, Mr. Glasgow. What are you doing here, Bernie? Why, I, I met Lotta coming from business school. I gave her a lift. Well, I suppose the office can just go hang waiting for you, huh? No. Get back to the office right away. I'll see you there later. All right. So long. So long. Wait, Bernie. I walked the auto with you. You're late today, Lotta. Don't I know it. Paul will be yelling for his dinner. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't run away. I, I've got to help Carrie. Oh, sit down. I want to speak to you. Well? Are you happy, Lotta? Oh, of course I am. That's good. You've done everything for us. I'll never be able to tell you what it's meant to Pa. Oh, I didn't know he'd do it for Swan. You were in on this thing, too. I know, and and thank you. Hey, Lotta. Lotta, I want to... Oh, I've just got to start dinner. You'll stay, won't you? <laughs> well, if you, if you want me to. You know I do. <laughs> All right, it's a deal. <laughs> Hey, uh, Swan, what do you think of that? Paper drinking cups, brand new idea. How do you like them, Lotta? It tastes the same as drinking out of a glass. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Good idea, Barney. You bet it's a good idea. I'm going to start making them right now. A fellow named Tony Schwerky thought of it, young fella down at the mill. Schwerky? Yeah. Now, don't say a word about this, but Evie's crazy about him, and it looks like wedding bells, too. Evie? But she's engaged. Yes, she was. But you don't know Evie. She was never very strong for Orville Bremer, I guess. Uh, this Tony Schwerky has a real inside track. He... he must be all right if Evie likes him. Now, don't tell a soul. Mrs. Glasgow doesn't know a thing about it. Anyway, the point is, I'm going to give you a few shares of this stock uh, in this cup here, Swan, and make you do a little work. If it catches on, you'll be independent for life. Oh, Mr. Glasgow. Ah, oh, but Barney, I ain't know nothing about paper business. Hey, better stick to timber. Then they know where I am. What? Yeah. They think they better go back to Iron Ridge. Pa! What are you talking about? Don't you like it down here? Well, sure we do, but you know, Swan, when it gets lonesome for the woods. You mean you're all going back? Oh, Pa, just when I'm getting along so well at the business college Now, here. now, Lotta, don't get excited. You can go to run at Ashland in summer just like you did before. Sure. You think I'm going back to waiting on tables? Well, why not? You think you're too good for it now, huh? Oh, now I see. You put him up to this, didn't you? Just because you think someone likes me and I might be happy. Well, I'm not going back to Iron Ridge. I'm going to stay here and take what I have a right to. I don't care what anybody says. I'm not afraid. I can look out for myself. Oh, Swan, you you heard what she said. You, Barney, you mustn't think, Barney. Oh, she's right, Swan. You mustn't stand in her way. She's right. My daughter, married to a mill hand. A mill hand. And you say you're glad about it. Well, why not, Emmy? It's just, he's just as good as we are. Besides, he's invented a paper cup that may make him a rich man one of these days. And if she marries him... She won't. Not if I can help it. You let her alone. She's not going to make the same mistake you and I did. Mistake? Emmy, I I came home tonight intending to have a talk with you. Uh, we should have had it a long time ago. I I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I'm talking about a divorce. I I want want you to get a divorce, Emmy. You're crazy. Why should I give you a divorce? No, 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 no. You get one. I won't. You're crazy. Are you in love with someone? Is it that girl of Swan's? Or are you trying to trade an old wife for a new one? Now, listen, Emmy Louise, you're not happy with me. You married me, and a fortune with me. And I've paid for it for 25 years, and so have you. You, you never cared for me, did you? Answer me. I did you a great wrong marrying you. I never really... No, no don't say it. Don't say it. I know it's true. I've always known how you felt. But I loved you. From the very first time I set eyes on you. I'm like that yet. Amy, please don't. You're all I've got. All I've ever had in the world. I don't care who Evie marries. If you'll only stay with me. I act like I'm the happiest thing in the world. Anything you say. Only... Only don't leave me. Emmy. Don't. Emmy, please, don't. Don't, don't, don't cry. Please don't cry, Emmy. It's, it's late, dear, and you'd better go to bed. 
We won't talk about this now. We'll we'll wait. We'll wait until until after Evie is married. <laughs> Go take this man for your wedded husband. I do. Then I now pronounce you man and wife. Marta, Marta, where are you? Here, Bernie. Hello, darling. You all alone? Waiting for you. <laughs> it's a great party, isn't it? You know, the minute I can stand on my own feet, I, I'd like to give one of these parties myself. For us, Marta. Oh, Bernie. All ready, Evie? All ready, Dad. Where are the grips? They've gone, dear. I took care of them. Can I bring you anything from Chicago, Mother? Yes. If there's a sale of down comforters, you might. Oh, never mind. I may not be here. You may not. What? I can't tell you now. I'll see you outside. Come on, Evie. Oh, wait, Dad. Do me one more favor. Uh, sure. Will you... Will you find Bernie for me? Tell him I, I've got to see him. Sure, where is he? I, uh... I think you might find him with... With Lotta. That's where he usually is, isn't he? What's that? With Lotta? I saw them upstairs together. In the front room. Oh. <laughs> but it can't be that soon, Bernie. But it will be. A lot of darling, how did I ever live before you came in? Oh, Bernie, dear. Why, why, Dad, what's the matter with you? What are you doing here with her? Lotta and I are going to be married. Why, you fool, she's my girl, she's my girl. Don't you believe him, Bernie, it's a lie, it's a lie. Ask Aunt Carrie, ask Pa, he's lying. Say you're lying. Say it's a lie, what you just said. I'll show you who's boss around here. Say it's a lie or I'll beat the daylights out of your father or no Why, father. you little good for nothing. Bernie, I... let him go, let him go. You'll hurt him. Let me take your hands He's off your it. father. He's an old man. Get out. Both of you. Dad, I... Get I... out. An old man. Old man. An old man. An old man. Bernard! Bernard! What's the matter? Are you ill? No, no. <laughs> that precious son of yours, I threw him out. Bernard! And that girl. <laughs> threw her out, too. He said he was going to marry her. Oh, is that <laughs> all? Is that all? Don't you care? No. As long as it isn't you. I thought it was you. Me? Why, Emmy, I'm an old man. Didn't you know that? An old man and an old fool. Oh, no, Bernard. You couldn't help yourself. I know how it was. You know. And I still love you. I told you that. Emmy, I won't ask your forgiveness. I've got that, I know. Just let me forget everything. I'm ready to forget now. And I am, too. Everything. That's... That's fine, Emmy. Thank you, Emmy. It's... Uh, it's almost time for lunch. Oh, if they'd only all come in now. I'll get them in for you. I'll get them in for you. Barney! Hey, Barney, have you gone to... Barney, what's the matter? Oh, nothing... Why, you, you look like maybe you see ghost. Swan, where's that, uh, that old triangle? Uh, the one I bring you? Yeah. They hang it over here on porch, but... Uh... Well, stand by me, Swan. Stay with me. Barney, you sure something ain't wrong? <laughs> oh, no. I'm old, Swan. I'm an old man. And an old fool. <laughs> Come and get it! Come and get it! Come and get it, over! That's all for 
from Edward Arnold and Anne Shirley as performers. As themselves, we'll hear from them again shortly. In the meantime, Melville Ruick has a word. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. We'd like to tell you tonight about Mrs. Richard James of New York City. Mrs. James has been married for almost ten years and has always done her own work. But her hands don't show it. In fact, they are so beautiful that they have recently been photographed for publication. I'd like you to hear just how Mrs. James keeps her hands lovely in spite of dishwashing. Here it is in her own words. Well-groomed, attractive hands are important to me, so I won't take chances with a soap that might chap them or make them red. I know Lux keeps hands lovely. Nine years of dishwashing have proved it to me. Here's the reason Lux Flakes protect your hands. They contain no harmful alkali to dry the oils of the skin which keep it soft and youthful. By using Lux Flakes in your dishpan, you give your hands beauty care while they work. It costs very little, especially if you get the economical large size package of Lux Flakes. I return you to Mr. DeMille. A moment now with Mr. Arnold and Miss Shirley. Here's our microphone. Come and get it. <laughs> I thought the phrase come and get it refers to eating. Can that be why you and Eddie Arnold are such a study in contrasts? You weigh only 100 pounds, and Eddie, well, I'd estimate his displacement at, uh, say, 200... And... 218 pounds exactly, Mr. DeMille. <laughs> and I guess I'm the only actor out here who doesn't mind having a waistline. When I went to the beach this past summer, hundreds of people used to lie down in my shadow to get out of the sun. <laughs> oh, come now. That sounds a little exaggerated. <laughs> well, maybe it is, Anne. But you remember the scene in the play tonight that took place in the steam bath? Yes. Well, in the picture, we had a real steam bath, and I spent days in it. Walter Brennan kept telling me that it wasn't so bad after all because there I was, losing pound after pound, getting paid for it. And how many pounds did you lose? <laughs> well, frankly, I gained a couple. <laughs> but Walter, who's as slender as a couple of beanstalks, he lost 11. Walter, come over here. Are you going to stand for being called a couple of beanstalks? Well, the studio ain't seemed to mind, and if the studio got the yak, I'll be the beanstalk any time, and I'm just the fellow that can do it, too. That's Mr. DeMille over there. I'm glad you made him thin, Eddie. You got him in shape to play a lean Tennessee hillbilly for me in The Buccaneer. And don't pay any attention to that Swedish accent of Walter's. He's really Irish. Well, C.B., you showed us all such a good time tonight that there's only one thing I could wish. I hope Edna Ferber, who wrote the book, Come and Get It, is listening in. I've never met Miss Ferber, and the nearest I came to it was to hear her talk a few weeks ago to the audience of the Lux Radio Theater. But I want to thank her for being, well, for being such a darn good writer. Thank you all, too, and good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, all. Uh... Mr. Arnold appeared to courtesy of B.P. Schulberg, and his latest film is Bosses on Broadway. And Shirley from RKO Studios, Mr. DeMille and Lou Ayers, Paramount, where the latter just completed Hold'em Navy. Louis Silvers is from 20th Century Fox, where he directed music for Second Honeymoon. Come and Get It was presented through courtesy of Samuel Goldwyn, producer of Hurricane. Word of our next show comes to you now from Mr. DeMille. Backed by a magnificent record of success on stage and screen, Robert Emmett Sherwood's thrilling drama, The Petrified Forest, comes to the Lux Radio Theater next Monday night. It's a play alive with action and suspense, heightened by a touching love story and set against the exciting background of the Arizona desert lands. As the disillusioned wanderer, we bring you Herbert Marshall. As the girl who longs to find expression in the outside world, Miss Margaret Sullivan. And as the tight-lipped killer who throws them suddenly together, Eduardo Cianelli. Three great players in one of the greatest plays of recent years. <laughs> Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Herbert Marshall, Margaret Sullivan, and Eduardo Cianelli in The Petrified Forest. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Announcer has been Melville Lewis. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.